What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with camera tips and tricks for the Boost Mobile Celero 5G+. Plus. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most of the various cameras on your phone. Now the first thing I want to do is go over all the various cameras that we're actually getting here with the Celero 5G+. Plus. And there are quite a few of them. Now starting off with the front facing camera, we have a 16 megapixel camera and it is located in this hole punch. So overall, a very seamless design here with the phone. Then on the back of the device, we have a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera to assist with portrait mode. Now here's how things look on the camera app. This is the main rear camera right now. Then from here, to get to the ultra wide angle camera, you just go to 0.5, and you can see that it does crop things out quite a bit. So I'm a big fan of the ultra wide camera. It's definitely an excellent way to capture more of your surroundings. And especially when we're on vacation, for example, I tend to use this feature quite a bit. It's certainly a nice way to really change up the look of your photos. So overall, I'm really happy with it. Now then from here, if you want to capture portrait mode photos, you get a live focus, and then with that, you get blurred out backgrounds, which I know that many people are a big fan of. And what's nice as well is that we do get a slider for the blur. So if you want less blur, you can do that. Or if you want more blur, you can make that adjustment as well. Now, unfortunately with portrait mode, it is only available on this device with the rear camera. So you cannot take portrait selfies, which honestly is a bit of a disappointment, but I suppose for some people out there that may not be a deal breaker. Now we can also head over to the more tab and access more functionalities. So you can see there's pro mode. So we'll go there. And in pro mode, you can adjust the ISO, white balance, and some other things as well. Certainly a bit more sophisticated here if you're someone who really pays attention to all those various attributes. Also in the more tab, we have slow motion, hyperlapse. We also have a 50 megapixel mode. So what's interesting about this device is that by default, it doesn't actually capture images at the full 50 megapixels when using the main camera. And there's actually two reasons for that. It does take a bit more processing power to process those 50 megapixel images, which on a device like this, where it's already not necessarily the fastest phone out there, that can be a bit cumbersome at times. And the second reason why we don't have 50 megapixels enabled by default is because 50 megapixel photos do take up a lot of extra space on your device. So to give you the best experience possible, they have made this feature optional. Now, once you're in this mode, you can easily capture those photos and then view them back. We'll let that load, there we go. And you can see things are very crisp and clear as a result of taking photos with that camera at the maximum megapixel count. And then the final option here is Google Lens. So if you're not familiar with that, it's really cool and a pretty underrated feature in my opinion. But basically with Google Lens, you can capture a photo of an object and then it will search for that photo to find other things that are similar. So you can see it's already pulling up plants that look almost just like this one, which is pretty cool. Now, if you wanna take any of these options in the more tab and add them to this bottom slider, you can easily customize that. So tap on the pen icon right there. Then from there, you can edit it. So I'm gonna take the 50 megapixel option, for example, and put it in that bottom slider. So what I can do is grab onto it, drop it in, go back, and then now you'll see it's right down here. Then to move it back into the more tab, I can just drag it back down. Now, unfortunately, all of the default options cannot be moved into the more tab. So those do always have to stay, but at least we still have the ability to add items from the more tab into the main slider. Now there are several methods to switch from the rear camera to the front camera. The first method is pretty self-explanatory. We have this button right there, which flips it around. But the other option as well is just to swipe down on the viewfinder. So just like that, it switched it and then I'll switch it back. So that's pretty helpful. And then I almost forgot to mention, but there is a dedicated night mode as well with the camera. So that certainly can come in handy in lower light situations. Now heading back over to the main photo mode, we do have some options up top here. The first one up here is the flash. So you can have the flash on auto, have it on at all times, or you can have just a light always on as well. So if you just want the flash on, even when you're not taking photos, you can do that too. So that's pretty cool. We also have a timer up here too. So three seconds or 10 seconds. And then you can also adjust the aspect ratio. So four by three is the default. You can also do 16 by nine, one by one, or you can even do the full frame of the actual phone itself. So this entire aspect ratio will be one giant photo. You can do the same thing with video as well. So you can see up top here, we have 16 by nine, full, or you can even do one by one videos. So maybe you're taking videos for Instagram, that might potentially come in handy. Now, if you're looking for a quick and easy way to access the camera app from anywhere throughout the phone's operating system, 
All you have to do is just double press on the power button and it'll pull up the camera app, just like that. Let's try that one more time from the app drawer. And there we go, it pulled up the camera app. Now moving on from here, you can go up to the gear icon in the upper right corner to access even more settings. So the first one here is shutter sound. So you might have noticed that when you take a photo or capture a video, the phone does make a sound, which can be a bit annoying for some people. So you can disable that if you want to, and then now the phone will be silent. You can also save the location and the metadata for all your various images. So if you want to, you can enable that. There's also self-timer image. So photo is taken in the same direction as the preview. So that might be helpful. That is pretty much the default on most smartphones. So it kind of flips it around so that your photos look exactly as if someone was looking at you versus it looking like it was a mirror. There's also an option here for grid lines. So if you enable that, you're basically getting a grid here with nine rectangles. So it's nice sometimes to have the rule of thirds in your images. There's also take picture in auto HDR. So generally, if you're just kind of a regular smartphone user, I would recommend capturing your photos in HDR, but at least if you don't want to, you don't have to. We also have shortcut to take picture. So we'll go there and basically what you can do, and this is already set up by default, but volume up or volume down will capture an image or take a video, but then heading back here, you do have the option to have those buttons do the zoom instead. So if you do volume up now, it will zoom in, and then volume down will zoom out all the way out to the ultra wide camera. And then finally, we have an option here for video size. So you can take videos with the rear camera, at least here at 30 FPS or 60 FPS at 1080p, but you can also make further adjustments. So you can do one by one at 1440 by 1440 or full at 1640 by 720. So kind of some strange resolutions there. I think for most people, they probably will just capture video in the default 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080, but at least you have a few different options available there for you. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Boost Mobile Celero 5G Plus. Overall, despite this being a lower end Android device, I do at least appreciate that we are getting a lot of different cameras here. And in addition to that, you do get a lot of different camera abilities. So it's not just a matter of having pretty good hardware here related to the cameras, but we have software that does back that up. So I think this phone is a great preview device if maybe you're not sure if you wanna pay more money for something more advanced, but at the same time, you do still wanna have a variety of different features. Because I remember it wasn't too long ago that if you wanted to go for a lower end smartphone, you basically only got one camera and you barely got any bonus features that you typically find with more expensive smartphones. So at least in this situation, you won't be spending too much on this device, but if you find yourself using all these various camera features and you want to take things up a level, then at least you can then further justify spending money on a more expensive phone. But overall, I hope this video is helpful to you and hopefully you learned something new today about the Boost Mobile Celero 5G+. Plus. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, but this is Kevin here and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.